Welcome back to the Arca Bernard series. Well, it's kind of a recap show. I'm Casey Campbell. That's Arca Bernard series PR director, Charlie Brawl. Um, we are here to recap the 2021 Arca Bernard series season. Uh, yes, we still have a West race at Phoenix in a few weeks. So um, yeah, we still have that. But the main Arca season is over. Uh, Ty Gibbs is our champion, uh, well, the champion of the Arca Bernard series and Six different winners this season. I didn't think we'd get to six. But yeah, for a while, it looked like we were only going to have two, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm actually was, uh, you know, the, Nick Sanchez win is big for a lot of different reasons, but it, it kept us from tying the record for fewest winners in a season. So I'm, I'm really, really happy with that. Um, yeah. You know, we always like to see a lot of different drivers celebrate down in victory lane. And uh, it was really great to see Nick get that first career win. He's been so close on a number of different occasions. And, you know, when the opportunity uh, presented itself, he jumped, man. He, he went and took it. And, you know, I know Ty was really, really happy, obviously, uh, after clinching the championship. But, you know, he was a little disappointed, you know, in, in the outcome of the race itself. He said, I, I wish I would have chose the other lane on that restart. And, you know, he had a lot on the line there. You know, it's it's a really, really big deal to win an Xfinity race and then come back later in the night and win an ARCA race. Two races in one day. Yeah. Um, you know, any racer would want to win both of those. Yeah, so and he's done that before. He so. has. He has. He wanted to do it again. And, you know, he, he was a little bummed, but, you know, he, he still got to celebrate that championship and, and close out the year with 10 wins in 20 races. Uh, just a, a phenomenal season, 19 top fives, 14 poles, you know, 1600 plus laps led. What more can you say? It's just been a phenomenal year for Ty Gibbs. And, um, you know, he doesn't really know. I mean, if, and if he does, he hasn't announced it, but uh, doesn't really know what he's got going on for next year. I'm sure, you know, we'll see him in some Xfinity races for sure. Um, just don't know how many. Um, I'm hoping we get to see him a couple few times, maybe here back in the Arca series, uh, Daytona, Talladega, maybe. I would love to see it. Um, but he is well on his way to, uh, to a career that's going to uh, see him racing on Sundays and winning on Sundays very, very soon. And we're proud to have him as our champion. Yeah, Nick Sanchez, of course, won. Um, how about Rev Racing? They came in. This is your, their first yeah. kind of full year in this uh, yeah. in the main platform. Yeah, I know they ran some combo races last year when, you know, with, when ARCA and ARCA East ran some combo races and with this year and all that. But what's it like to see them get their first crack at victory lane? No, it's great. So, you know, obviously the two-car won – you know, earlier in the season with Landon Lewis at DeCoin. Uh, that was a, uh, a combined effort with uh, Mark Rett, Rett Jones Racing. Um, you know, Mark Rett fielded the car, uh, utilizing uh, Max Siegel's car number and entrant points. But this was a, a full-blown deal, you know, and it's great. It's great to have Rev in Victory Lane. They're a, a, an incredible organization. Uh, Max Siegel is a very dynamic individual. We're, we're proud to have him as a part of our, our series. Um, in doing the research, Casey, and I've, I've gone back and, and looked at the records, and unless I'm missing something, Max is the first uh, Black team owner to win a super speedway race here yeah. in the Arca Bernard Series. That's pretty historic. That is. That's a, that's a historic thing, and, and we're very happy to, to, uh, to have that happen and, and, and have that be a part of our 2021 season. That's great. And, and for, for Nick to be a, a member of that Drive for Diversity program, that's exactly what this program is here for. And, and we're just, we're tickled pink to see the success that that organization has had this year. And they have been a tremendous help to us this year, um, going into some race markets and doing some pre-race publicity. And I'm really happy to see, you know, them get to celebrate in victory lane, kind of a, a, a great way to put a period on their season. Hey, you want some breaking news, Charlie? Sure. Um, it was just announced. We got some Arca West breaking news that just came into my inbox. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, Jake Garcia is going to make his Arca West debut with DGR at Phoenix. How about that? Yeah, I saw it was that. just announced yeah. by DGR. Yeah, saw that. Jake's a pretty good little uh, late model driver, and we will be very happy to have him out west in that Arca uh, West race out there at 
Phoenix. That's going to be a good one. That's uh, quite the stacked field out there. Yeah, it'll be in the 45 car uh, for DGR. So got a jam-packed field for uh, this Arca West race out in uh, out in Phoenix. But let's talk about a couple of the things that happened uh, during the race. I know there was some uh, some news regarding the schedule for next year. The championship race will be at one of my favorite tracks, and I know it's one of yours as well. Toledo Speedway will be hosting the Arkham Menard Series Championship next year. Yeah, the final it's race of the points. year will be at Toledo Speedway next year. That's something we're very much looking forward to. Um, still can't really talk too much about the rest of the 2022 schedule. Um, still waiting on some things to come on back. We hope to have that out sooner than later, but uh, yeah, that's, that's really all we got for now. But yeah, that, that final race of 2022 should be pretty exciting, huh? To have it at Toledo Speedway, I know that is the home of ARCA um the home of arca where it was there um you know that's to have it at toledo speedway a place that you and i have you and i have gone to so many times what does that mean for arca to have their championship back at toledo speedway well it's great to do it on a short track you know i think that's going to be a, a real interesting twist to that championship battle you know when when you go to a mile and a half like kansas and in uh, first and foremost they have been a great host of that championship event and, and they would continue to be, if not for moving that race back into September, uh, the, the cup race back into September. Um, they have been nothing but a great partner. Yeah. Uh, seriously. Uh, thank you to Pat Warren and everybody at their team uh, at, at the track there on, on Pat's team. They, they've been great. Um, Eric Peterson and, and Matt Humphrey and everyone out there just very accommodating just want to make sure that we we get everything we need out there. It's been fantastic. Um, but you know, racing on a mile and a half, you know, it's, it puts a premium on arrow and it puts a premium on power. And it kind of, you know, not to say it takes the driver out of the equation, but it, you know, the, the car plays a much bigger role there. You know, getting back to a short track, you know, there's a little beating and banging. You know, the driver becomes a little bit more significant part of that equation. And you know, I'm, I'm all for it. You know, I think it's going to be great. You know, we had championship races there back in 2008, uh, 2011, a couple of very memorable championship races. Uh, yeah. So I can't, I can't wait to get back to those. It's, it's going to, it's going to be fun. Yeah. 2008 is, is, is its own story of, of, uh, <laughs> that's, we could talk about a whole episode about that, about right. two, the 2008 championship. So yeah, we could, yeah, we could 2011 could have its own as well. Uh, Cause that was pretty good as well. So yeah. yeah, just, but overall this series is, you know, kind of been, we've had some interesting races. I know it's been dominated by Ty and Corey, uh, Daniel Dye, of course, you know, someone, Nick Sanchez, but wh overall, what are you going to remember most about this season? I know a lot of the, everything's your favorite, but what are some of the things that you're really going to look for? Look yeah, at? the Ty Gibbs, Corey Heim battles throughout the first two thirds of the season, I think are really going to stand out to me. You know, those two really just hammer and, and tonged it, you know, all season long, they went back and forth and traded the points lead and, you know, traded some, some words back and forth here and there. And, you know, uh, the reality of it is, you know, both Ty and Corey are just super great young men, um, you know, with both with big futures. Um, you know, it's, I see it with my twin sons right now, Casey, they're, they're kind of fighting to see who can be the biggest dog in the house, you know, and, you know, Corey wants to be the big dog and Ty wants to be the big dog. And, you know, there, there could only be one. And, you know, um, it, it was a lot of fun to watch those two go back and forth. And, um, you know, the, the unfortunate part, and I say this every year, the, the unfortunate part is someone's got to lose. Um, I was so disappointed last year for Michael Self. Um, I'm disappointed this year for Corey Heim. He had a terrific year. I um, mean, any other year, he'd be the champion. So one of the interesting statistical nuggets that I took out of this year. Yeah. So our, the record for the best average finish for an Arkham Menard Series champion prior to 2021 was 3.8, way back in 1982, set by my buddy Scott Stovall. Scott's one of our uh, officials at the track uh, these days. So back in 1982, the record, 3.8 average finish. Corey Himes' average finish this year is 3.1, and he finished second in the points. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, of course, Ty 
his average finish 3.0. And that's with the 27th place finish at Talladega. So uh, Ty did. He just had an incredible year. But any other year, Corey Heim would be the champion far and away. He would have. He, he just would have demolished the competition. So um, I, I really do hope people remember just what a great year Corey Heim had this year. You know, they say no one remembers who finished second. Well, Corey, fin you know, won six races this year. That's not, not too bad. Yeah, it's definitely an accomplishment in itself. I mean, and, and it should be because, you know, not and not every year you're going to have someone. And if, if a couple things would have gone right, he could have broke Tim Steele's all-time win record, which still stands um, to this day. So... Well, the modern era win record was the modern era win record, right? Was what? Uh, well, the, set back in 1996. The Arco, the main Arco win record, isn't that like 19? No, the the right. So that's the all time win record set back in 1965. I believe it's 16 back back in 1965. So yeah, yeah but um, you know, he did. He he had a shot at it. Um, Could have won. Could have, should have won at Salem and could have, should have won at Kansas. I just <laughs> didn't quite get there. Yep. So, I know it's the typical, the end of the season. I know there's also a lot of things, you know, a lot of changes, people leaving. I know you, I know there's a retirement in your office. And of course, uh, there's going to be, there's also some people leaving uh, the Mav TV scene as well. Yeah, I've got to really send my personal note of thanks to Mark Gundrum. Uh, Mark is my boss here at ARCA. Um, he has given me a lot of opportunity over the years to, to come on and do, um, you know, the internet radio broadcasts of these races, which really got my feet wet in broadcasting and uh, helped get me uh, on television back in 2015 and 2016 with yep. uh, our former television partners, uh, CBS Sports Network and American Sports Network. Um, and, and he hired me here to, to do this job and, and I've known Mark for a very long time and, um, he's a racer, man. He, he's a racer to the core. He, he lives it and breathes it. And I, I'm, I'm going to miss working with him. He's a lot of fun. He's, he's a fun guy. And, um, he, he really, um, really has put a, a big stamp on this series over the years. You know, he's, he's kind of the architect of the Menards branding. Uh, here at ARCA and yeah he's he's had a big input he's had a big uh, effect on this series over the years and and we we are going to be forever grateful for his contributions I, I'm hoping he he doesn't become a stranger and and not show up to some of our races particularly the ones up near uh, his home base up there in in Wisconsin um, but yeah we we're, we're gonna just like any other organization we still gonna have to get up tomorrow and go go to work and you know, we've, we've got some, some new folks in place and we'll, we'll keep, keep doing the deal. And, um, you know, also have to say thank you to Bob Dillner, who also is stepping out of the booth there at, at MAV and um, still going to be involved, but, you know, not doing the play by play. And, you know, he's, he's got a lot on his plate as well, but uh, thanks to both of those for all of their uh, considerable uh, contributions to ARCA over the years. Also, thank you to Dave Reef, who will also be moving over to another side of the Lucas Oil, uh, production studio so um yeah forgot to mention him as well uh, yeah so um definitely there but we'll have um we'll talk more about that phoenix race that's going to be that that stacked field for that we have yeah a, it's going to be really good casey i'm, crazy I'm really left. excited about it yeah really excited about it we've got you know championship drama we've got you know teams coming in from from the east coast to go over there compete for a win and you know, drivers making their debut. It's it's going to be big, and you know, again, that's coming up not this weekend, but the following weekend, November sixth, over at Phoenix Raceway. You can watch it live on Track Pass. I believe it starts three o'clock Eastern time. Um, should be a ton of fun. And um, my final, of course, it's the final arc of broadcast of the year. My final broadcast of the year, and uh, we're looking forward to an exciting show. Oh yeah, for sure. All right, Charlie Crawl, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us, and. Uh, We'll talk to you next week when we preview the Arco West Championship at Phoenix. Should be a good one. You got it, buddy.